G'day guys, welcome back to another video on the True Footy YouTube channel. We are on the brink of the resumption of the 2020 AFL season. I'm sure you're all just as pumped as I am. So it's time to start smashing out the regular AFL content. And that continues today. I'm going to be doing my 10 breakout players for the 2020 AFL season. Now this kind of content does get a bit of a run every year from various outlets. But I decided to give you my 10. And this isn't necessarily the the only 10 players are going to be breakout players. Obviously, that would be a ridiculous sort of assertion. What I'm suggesting is just 10 players that will take their game to the next level in 2020. And I didn't want to cop out because I think a few people put, you know, a bunch of first year players like Matthew Rowe is going to break out in his first year. What I'm looking at is more players who are already within the game who might take their game to the next level and establish themselves as a quality player of the competition. So I'm going to start rattling through my list of 10, although I will give you a disclaimer, they are in no particular order. First on my list is Sydney's Ollie Florent. Now he was pick 11 in 2016 for the Swans and for a player that I think is going to be a very good midfielder, I do think he kind of has a lower profile than maybe he should. Now he has been up and down in his form and that's to be expected of a 21 or 22 year old midfielder, but it was his last month of the 2019 season that really made me sit up and take notice. In, his, in three of his last four games, he had 28, 29 and then 20 28 possessions again and really finished the year strongly and it sort of indicates to me he's the key to the changing of the guard at Sydney who have a lot of old workhorses in that midfield you got Josh Kennedy and Luke Parker's not old but you know what I mean there's a generational gap there I think Oli Florent is going to emerge as a really important midfielder for them going forward and I think this is the year he steps up and gets noticed around the AFL my second nomination I'm going to back in Carlton's Jacob Wiedering now he's a former number one pick and we know that all number one picks come with a weight of expectation and it's been huge on him considering he's a key position player those guys always take longer to come on and I think he sort of had second year blues or whatever it was he sort of had a down patch after his he first emerged on the scene but now I think he's a bit older a bit more physical this the team he's playing in this year in theory should get better and I think he's going to step up and prove to be one of the best young key defenders in the competition now we know he's a very good intercept defender, potentially elite in that category, but he's also in recent times held Hawkins and Tom Lynch to not many goals when playing on them. At 22 years old, I think this could be the year he takes his game to the next level. I know last year he actually finished top six in their best and fairest, but I think we're looking at a potentially elite key position player of the future. My third breakout player is another Carlton player. Jack Martin obviously played his first game in round one for them against Richmond. Now I remember pre-draft, Jack Martin was billed as this super talent. Like some people compared him in regional WA as playing like a Buddy Franklin meets a Stephen Hill type player, which is ridiculous. He went, of course, to the Gold Coast in that mini draft and he was held as better than Hogan and Jager O'Meara at the time. And of course, he's gone to the Gold Coast, hasn't really come on. But to be fair, the Gold Coast isn't really a really good breeding ground for developing talent. He obviously never really reached his potential there. I don't think he ever averaged more than about 18 possessions and only once did he average uh, over a goal a game, which doesn't look great on paper. But obviously in round one, he had four goals and 17 possessions and he looked really, really good. So if the Blues can nurture this guy's talent and develop him, we're looking at a future star of the competition. Next up, we've got GWS's Sam Taylor, and in my opinion, this guy is one of the best key position talents in the land. Now, you could argue he kind of had a breakout year last year, but I do expect he's potentially going to take his game to the next level again this year in a team that made the grand final. He played 22 out of a potential 26 games and really nailed down a spot in that GWS backline. And he really was more of like a defensive strong pillar in a backline that otherwise has a lot of players playing with freedom. And he played that role to perfection for them. He might not necessarily explode on the scene this year, but this year I do expect him to cement himself as a respected key position defender across the league, which is only going to be the start for him because he's only 20 years old. Next up, I am going with St. Kilda's Hunter Clark to have a breakout season, and he was a you know, a bit of a favorite of mine around the draft. I do have my favorites every year. Really wanted him for West Coast. He's a sort of big bodied but smooth moving midfielder. I like those types. He's kind of built as a defender as well, especially on like websites, like fantasy websites. In my opinion, he's got potential as a classy midfielder. 
He's a composed player, he's got a penetrating kick, and I think from a Saints perspective, he's a really important talent if you're ever gonna get through this rebuild and attack the finals in the future. It's taken a while for him to hit his straps, and I do think it sometimes does take big-bodied midfielders longer, but he played the last 11 games of 2019, and on only one occasion did he not hit 20 disposals. So I do think that if he gets some genuine midfield minutes this season, in 2020, he could take his game to the next level. Next up, we have, from the Gold Coast, young Will Bro. And I must say, I know he was a top 10 pick just a few years ago, but with the amount of talent that Gold Coast have access to in the draft, as a talent, he kind of slips under the radar. He's another big bodied midfielder that's had the slow burn start to his career. In his three seasons, he's never played more than eight games. Although in the eight games he did play in 2019, he averaged 22 disposals, four marks, and six tackles. Now he's got a little bit more competition for spots this year. Obviously, they've just recruited Rowland Anderson, and of course, Hugh Greenwood from the Adelaide Crows. But I do expect Will Brody will crack a consistent game this year and emerge as a potentially important player for the Gold Coast moving forward. Next up, I have got a popular pick for this category, and that is Melbourne's Christian Petrarca. Now, he's another player like Weedering because he was a top two pick. He's got massive weight of expectation on his shoulders and the microscope's always been on his development. We know he's an explosive, fast, strong midfielder forward type. Fitness has probably always been kind of a concern, but I think he might have so, slowly overcome that and really added that string to his bow. In the preseason, he had 38 possessions and three goals, and if you're collecting the ball 38 times, you're probably running out the game pretty well. People assume that because he's physically built, he's ready-made, and it doesn't quite work like that. Dusty Martin, as well, is a similar sort of player. When he was at that age, he wasn't winning games off his own boot consistently like he is now. He obviously had time, or needed time, to develop that strength and that fitness at AFL level as well. Petrarca, I'm not saying he's as good as Dusty, or, as, or even half as talented, really. Few players are. But I do think he sort of could trend in that direction, and this is potentially a breakout year for him and boy do the demons need it next up i'm picking another favorite of mine i'm going with new Fremantle docker blake acres he was another player that i really liked at the time of his draft when i saw him in that 2013 draft pool for wa i thought he had all the tools necessary to make it at afl level he's 190 centimeter midfielder he can play inside and outside he's fairly strongly built he's classy he kicks the ball well you've got reasonable pace and on top of all that he's good overhead and versatile as well what i think has been mostly holding Holding back acres other than you know taking time to build size has been injuries he's had a horribly injury prone career and he hasn't really ever gained momentum he's played good in flashes but been cut down every time he started to develop that momentum on top of that I think his versatility has hindered him in some senses he's been thrown around the park by the Saints and I think at Fremantle under Longmuir it sounds like he's going to be playing in what I think is his most natural position as a pure inside midfielder I don't necessarily think this guy is gonna be a star the comp but I reckon if he gets on the park say he plays 17 or 16 games for the Dockers this year he could be good support for Fremantle's Nat Fife and boy do they need that. Number nine I'm going for Oscar Allen, my boy and you can call me biased but I'm a huge on this kid's talent. I genuinely think this guy is probably one of the more talented young forwards in the competition. Now it's unclear whether he's officially 192 centimeters or 194 centimeters but it doesn't really matter because his athleticism his leap and his reach his sticky hands kind of make up for that now i've been a huge advocate for oscar allen because i genuinely believe there's not too many players around the league who come in as a second year player play support ruck in the absence of nick natanui in addition to also playing forward in his natural position and if you think back he also started his career as a key defender when the Eagles had some injuries in 2018. So he's literally played in every position on the ground and with his athleticism and his ability at ground level, I think he played them all very well. Now this year, Nick's back, so he's not gonna have to play second ruck. And he's also got maybe one year of JK and JD in the forward line, and he can sort of be that foil for them and play in his natural role. And I think this could be a very big year for Oscar Allen. Now that he's over his preseason injuries, he's more conditioned than he was. I am hoping he pulls out a big one. Hmm, I probably could have phrased that better. Number 10, I have got another somewhat undersized forward in Adelaide's Darcy Fogarty. Now, a few years ago, Fogarty was pick 12 to the Adelaide Crows, and at the time, he was considered a bit of a sliding talent 
This is his third year now. I think he's played about 15 games. Most of last year was spent in the sandful, but he came back at the end of the year, and his last month was really impressive. He kicked five goals against the Eagles in Perth in what was a pretty good game and a pretty good showing from Adelaide. Then the following week, he backed it up with three against Collingwood. Now, I do think the Crows may struggle this year. I've pegged them for the bottom four, but they have gotten rid of Josh Jenkins, and for, as far as I'm concerned, they're rebuilding. There's no excuse not to give Fogarty every opportunity. I think this could be a big year for him to show how talented he really is. I'm not saying he's going to kick 40 goals and average 15 posies, but I do think he will be a well-known player by the end of the season. Anyway, guys, that is the end of the video. Thanks again for tuning in to the True Footy YouTube channel. As always, I welcome your recommendations for who are players potentially at your club or not necessarily at your club who you think will break out or take their game to the next level in 2020. I'm sure there's a player on your team that I didn't mention. Let me know about it in the comments. Anyway, guys, remember to subscribe if you're new, and I will see you sometime very soon somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.